So if you trade any form of SMC liquidity or market structure, you're gonna to wanna to watch this video the whole way through because I'm gonna go through the importance of confluences by using multiple timeframes. Now I've just spent the last four hours piecing together what it's like to trade just two timeframes and oh my God, you get chopped up. Over the last couple of weeks on YouTube, I've created a series of videos purely about boss and shock and how we do boss and shock differently at FTR because it's based on mathematics and market direction and it's got accuracies which SMC do not have. With that in mind, I'm piecing together the next kind of confluence for trading plan for you guys to be able to have but hopefully see the workings of this so you start taking it into consideration. This backtesting resulted in about 100 trades. I haven't stuck it all into a spreadsheet because I don't want to spend another four hours doing it because it was mind numbing. Um, but quite frankly, there's about 100 trades, 70 of them-ish were losses, about 20 were TP1, which is exactly the same rules in the previous videos. The, the ETF, so the entry timeframes near a swing, and then the TP2, was the higher time frame POI. So it was just a rebalance of the structure. I was also using BOSS and CHOC as a directional bias. So there were only two time frames which I was using, the M15 and the M1, all entries off the M1. But the problem with that is when you use CHOC, it's a very, very powerful tool. And we've got all the stats on basically how often you can get BOSS after BOSS, CHOC after CHOC, BOSS after CHOC, CHOC after BOSS etc etc so you get where i'm coming from so we know that we're going to get boss way more times than we are getting to get chalk the problem is is that you don't always get an entry set up also when you're using boss and chalk as your sole purpose for trying to get involved in trades just using two time frames you are going to get battered hence a 70 percent losing rate um i actually went through i think a drawdown of nine trades in a row where it was just like loss 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 and the wins were so small um, it was really just doing it. I just wanted to stop halfway through. I recorded the whole thing, by the way. It's about four hours. The second half of it, my microphone wasn't plugged in. So generally speaking, I can make that video available if anyone really wants to watch it, but it's boring. Now, in this video, I'm gonna go through the whole purpose of higher timeframes and using multiple timeframes. In FTR, we use a minimum of three timeframes. We've got the ETF, which is the entry timeframe. You've got the MTF, which is the medium timeframe. You've got the HTF, which is the higher timeframe. The market is generally quite fractal. It, it, it doesn't mean that it's solely 100% fractal, but generally speaking, it does the same thing across multiple timeframes. And the timeframes which I've found which tend to work well together are the M15, the H4, and the weekly. The best trade that it can possibly get is get chock and a retracement within a weekly on the H4 and then within that retracement to the uh, to the order block on the H4 you want to try to get an entry on the M15 if you can because that means that you can follow the trade from the extreme order block or the extreme POI in the weekly and feed it all the way down to the next weekly and that means that you can hold trades for literally weeks at a time and you can stack and add positions and you can just absolutely explode your account um, I've done maybe two of them in my lifetime though, so you've got to have balls of steel to hold it. Generally speaking, three timeframes is what you need. For those who want to do scalping, like what I've been doing over the last couple of months due to time constraints, which I've got during the day, I will use the one minute. Sometimes I'll use the 15 seconds, but generally speaking, use the one minute with the 15 minutes as your medium time frame and the H4 as your higher time frame. So you've got a prevailing market trend with the H4, that's typically gonna be a session. So if you think of London, that may well be bullish. Um, New York can come in, it can turn bearish, lead you back to an order block at the start of London and then send you back up during the Asian session and the start of next London to top those highs previously. You'll know pretty much what I mean if you trade the same sort of style as I do. On here, I just got chopped around like mad using the M15 and the one minute. So when I first learned how to trade and I literally had no idea to even look at YouTube, I wish I had done though to be fair because it would have saved me about three years and about 20 grand. I used line charts, okay? So yes, there were candlestick charts and I knew that's really what I needed to do to, to really learn how to enter and stuff. But I wanted to learn why the market was moving how it did, where it was gonna to go to next. And I actually got pretty good at um, figuring out where the direction was gonna to head to next and what it was gonna bounce off. So you typically use this sort of thing for figuring out support and resistance. Um, I didn't know at the time that I was teaching myself support and resistance. It's only when I started learning about support and resistance that I realized what I was looking at was support and resistance. Now that all evolved into how I trade now. 
trading zone to zone. But generally speaking, look at these charts here. If you were to place trades using um, chalk just on every single one of these swings, you will have way more losses than you have wins. You might be able to position it in a, in a way where you are taking trade solely off of extremes of these angles. So just think, um, you know, this area here, this area here, this here, um, there, 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 etc. You know, so you're looking at like the main kind of, I would assume like pivot points or something like that. Um, but effectively just the, the angles of the market. Yeah, of course, price reacts from the most of the time, but you also need to have a higher time frame bias. So right now we're looking at the M15. Let's just have a quick look at the H4. It does pretty much the same, but the same principle applies that you can't just use chalk as your bias and your bias for entry and boss as well, just anywhere all over the chart. So I'm just gonna show you really quickly how we tend to use boss and chalk and how we use it very successfully and how it also filters your trades, okay? So this trading, which I did, all the back testing, you know, I got into, I remember going through a few of them thinking I got into this trade and oh yeah, I got knocked out here as well. But there were about a hundred trades over the period of a month and that is exhausting. It was about five trades a day. You know, it's like, you don't really want to be taking that many trades if you can help it because it is knackering. Like, I know that your income levels can be a lot higher trading and trading successful, but oh my God, it is stressful if you just sat watching the charts all day. That's why I tend to use alerts and just the higher time frame and also the filtering of my trades. Now, I'm just going to draw out what I typically do on the start of every of my bat testing videos, which I'm going to start doing again pretty soon, because I think that a lot of people want to see, uh, especially the new people to the channel, want to see how everything comes together. Now, we're going to pretend that these are H4 POI, so they're going to be the highest time frame POI available. Now, our entry time frame is going to be the one minute. Okay, so we're going to do this on the H4, and then we're going to zoom in a little bit on the M15, and then we'll find a place on the chart where we can replicate this in real life just to give you a working demonstration. So these are the H4 POIs. When I draw this, each one of these moves is just either a leg or it could be a candle, but essentially four hours, it will pull back, press down, and I press into here into a previous H4 from the past. Okay, so that should be off the screen somewhere. but. What we're gonna do now is we're going to change the color of this and pretend that it is the M15. So we have rules within FTR. The link is below if you wanna join us, by the way. And it's, we just trade this method. We don't trade multiple methods of SMC. If I see any indicators on people's charts, I ask them to remove the chart or I just delete it myself. Um, we don't want any complications beyond what trading is and it, it's simple but it is complicated if you get things wrong we're looking for a certain mitigation point which is basically a depth of penetration into these pois or these order blocks and we drop to a lower time frame so h4 is the direction which are the green lines the m15 is now the red line which i'm drawing here and we're looking for a, a pullback which is what you need a press down to press lower than that previous lowest point and then we want to see in the next leg, we want to preferably, if we can get it, get a body break above this recent high on the M15. And this may be within this POI, it may be just beyond, we may have wicked below. There's multiple um, ways in which we can trade this, but on the pullback down, what we're looking for is for an M15 POI. And then what we're trying to do if we can, we'll drop down to the M1 and try to replicate exactly the same. Now you don't have to use chalk, you can just use a rejection candle, which is quite often what I do. It's why I get a lot more stop outs, but I also get very precise entries and a very, very small stop loss. Um, but it means that I have to be present and watch the chart when I'm scalping, and that's absolutely fine. But generally speaking, we will look to get the same kind of reaction within here if we can, to then feed the market out, take profit at this area here, wait for a pullback, get involved in another trade, and essentially hold it to the higher time frame point of interest. Now that can be a monumental trade. It could be 20, uh, it could be 20 R, it could be 60 R. It really does depend. If you're using these multiple time frames together you are looking at a much wider view of the market than what is just exactly in front of you. Using just two timeframes gets you results 
like this and that was brutal doing it it was the most boring thing i've ever done and it's just not how i trade i will trade using a minimum of three time frames so just remember m1 m15 h4 if you want to scalp m15 h4 weekly if you want to day trade so the ones the ones of you who have a full-time job you're probably going to want to use the m15 h4 and weekly um, much slower you're waiting sometimes for days between trades and that's absolutely fine you can take trades in between these zones but we have very strict rules on when you should and when you shouldn't and a lot of it is based around price action so you need to learn a little bit about price action and particular angles in the market it, it can sound a little bit complicated but it's not but essentially the reason why you drop down to the lower time frames is you want to reduce the stop loss size now when i just at the final point where I started to create this strategy, I quit trading. Um, I, I was getting so frustrated that I could trade the daily extremely well between levels. So I was basically trading support and resistance on the daily using breakout. And I was actually really good, very accurate with about 65. It was about two thirds win rate. But my wins were literally like one to two, one to three, one to six was my best. And that took about three weeks to close. And I just knew it wasn't, it would be successful long term, but I didn't have long term to make the income that I needed at the time. So I basically quit trading. I was that close to making it, but I was that frustrated. And it took that little quitting time for me to be able to piece it together in my mind. It was so simple. What if I can just enter in those same places on the higher time frame, which was the daily for me? What if I could enter on something lower like the, the hourly or the four hour or something like that? And I started to piece it together and I've been able to figure it down to the one minute and now the 15 second, which is just mad. But generally speaking, I could shrink my stop loss from about 25 to 50 pips all the way down to five and sometimes one pip. Um, but the distance where it's gonna travel is the same as the higher time frame. So if my target was 100 pips away and my stop loss is five pips, that's a one to 20. And I know it's got a high probability of going there because it's reacting from these zones. So on here, effectively, I'm just using two timeframes and it was soul destroying, literally four hours. I can publish that video. It's just got no sound in the second half. Like you'll see me go through everything. You see me think, oh my God, this isn't working. It did end up with over hundred R, which is really good, solely down to the, to the TP2s, but you don't want to trade like that. I'm just telling you now, if you're trading to get rich, just make sure you do it in the right way. You don't want to swap a shit job that you've got for another shit job at the charts. Okay, you might make a load of money, but my God, it is a waste of your life. Set alerts, allow the market to move how it's going to do, allow the market to move between the zones and just watch it as it comes into these zones. That's all how I trade. It's really quite simple. Unless my alerts are going off, there is no need to be at the chart. You can go off and live your life. I'm just gonna try and find an example or two on the chart. Right, so I found a typical error on the chart, which I think a lot of people are gonna be familiar with. Uh, so I just popped over to the weekly and looked for unfortunate announcement of what happened a couple of years ago in Europe and where the markets just dropped quite suddenly. We had this huge run down. So, you know, the, the Euro was going down against the dollar. Prices recovered to about the halfway point. So if we get the GAN on here, just to, just to demonstrate, it's about halfway. It's, it's pretty much the EQ, what I call it. So the, the midpoint um, order block. So there's one around here and there's one here as well, which we, we played about with. So. We cleared the liquidity of that with the with the white candle and we sort of mitigated into this final candle before the big drop, before the big news announcement. So on the weekly, we have our POI right here. And then if we drop down to the H4, we'd been pretty much moving upwards in a recent trend around here. But because we're in the weekly, what we want to try to get, if we can, is a mitigation at the halfway point. So again, the EQ of that order block um, which we got over here. So if we start looking for very standard boss and chalk, um, you can use internal structure as well, which is what I tend to do, which is why I've got the inside bar on there, but you don't even have to in, in this instance, but that's the boss, this is the chalk. And once you've got a clear break of the chalk, i.e. this blue candle here, you can then look back and see where there's an unmitigated potential order block. And it doesn't have to be an opposite candle. 
and in this instance it's not so we've had the chalk we've had the uh, official chalk being announced right here which means we can look back and see if there's anything unmitigated so after this blue candle we had this pullback there was the imbalance right there this was the area of interest which we had and we're gonna hone in on on this part here when price comes back so price presses down it comes back this is the h4 which we're interested in so we're going to drop down to the m15 now and see what had happened so on the m15 again what we've got is we've got a mitigation of that halfway point on the h4 again these things don't happen every day and it takes a long time for it to occur but when you do see them you have to take these trades and you've got to hold them really like if you've got a prop firm account you can't really hold these unless they're swing trade accounts but this is something which you'd want to take on a personal account even if it's a small account and use a pretty decent sized risk on it and hold it to the next target okay so i'm going to show you the price had effectively this was the h4 it pressed down the m15 is working its way back up okay so we're working our way back up that was the m15 turn up here working our way down We've got the internal break below this inside bar right here. So as soon as we get this, this blue candle there, we've got the internal break. Now, the reason why you would revert to using the internal is based on the price action here. This is what I call curved liquidity. But generally speaking, the inside bar is enough to signify that the market is possibly gonna turn because we've got a confluence inside a confluence, which is the highest time frame within the medium time frame, and we're looking for the entry time frame to go from with this. So we're pressing down there the market pushed up we then got our sort of internal break okay so the internal break of structure occurs right here so after we get the break of this white candle right there we get the blue candle and then we're looking to retrace back up to the nearest one at the very top which is what you get with this with this white candle so i've just played it forward a little bit just to make sure that it does work out um, but i'm just going to go back to here and look at the m15 so if you try to take entries using the GAN, uh, which we tend to, you want to take the entry directly off the, the 0.25 use on, on the M15. It, it's the only time frame where we'll use the 0.25, um, but it just tends to work best. And if you're not sure about that, if you go and look at one of my videos on Boss and Chalk, right at the end, I go through how I actually figure it out using spreadsheets. And it's how I came to this conclusion as well by measuring the drawback percentage of every order block for about 12,000 trades. So that would be your first take profit. Just take a little bit off, basically try to cover your risk on the position and then just let the rest run. So I'm gonna slide this right the way across. We'll play it out a little bit. You did just see it, All right? We actually had a second entry opportunity as well. We got this internal break right here. So if you miss that first one, sometimes you'll get the opportunity for a second one. Um, but right off of that one, which is an order, that is an order block, this, this white candle here, because we've got this sort of like internal press down again, confirmed by these two candles. So there's actually a better entry available. So an even better risk reward ratio, I think. There we go, only slightly better, 0.2 pips. Um, but the target effectively for this, we're gonna have to incrementally move it up timeframes. The very first target, pretty much on the weekly, is going to be a weekly rebalance. Okay, so that's going to be the first target. The next target is going to be another order block beyond that. So you'd be looking at the rebalance of that order block. You're already up to 78R. That first one is 44, 78. And then you can feed it down to this one, which is what I think one of the targets were. And I think we literally just tapped it. And it's uh, 141, but it takes absolutely ages to get to. But you can hold that trade in your account and just forget about it because you know that you're in at a weekly, drop down to the H4 where you had to wait for chalk, and then to the 15 where you had to get at least an internal chalk followed by a boss, and then another boss entry just on the pullback, and down you go. So that's the reason why you want to use multiple time frames. It doesn't mean that we're waiting six months for every trade to come by. It's just you adjust the timeframes that are going to be suitable for your working hours or for your available trading hours. There's other timeframes which do sync well together. So you could use the five minute 
the hourly and the daily, they all sync really well together as well. The market does tend to work all together in these kind of cycles or this fractal nature, but it's certain timeframes which link well together and just try to think the number of iterations which those timeframes go into each other. So if you can make them pretty much the same, the one minute into the 15 is 15, uh, the 15 minute into the four hours 16 they're very similar they're not exactly the same but very similar it kind of makes sense that it's going to be working pretty much the same so you're looking for the same chart patterns you're looking for the same rejection candles and you're going to do extremely well you know it does work well um, but with a trade like that in reality you'd be trying to hold this um, down to this one if you could which is just a monumental amount and don't forget as well because you'd be in a trade like that long term like very long term of course there's going to be um, commissions that you've got to pay and you've got to pay like the overnight fees on the Wednesday and over the weekend but it will enable you to have a lot more margin on your account so you can actually use the profits of that trade to fund all the intra trades in between which is what we tend to do so Anyway, I hope this video has been helpful. It's, it's not as you know action-packed as, as the other videos, more me talking, but I am gonna be going back to doing a lot of back testing videos, just looking at the previous week on how we trade at FTR, maybe a trade of the week. Um, but if you've got any comments, any suggestions, let me know and I'll, I'll try and do my best for you. But um, I've got a lot of focus on my own trading at the moment, so not as active as I am usually on YouTube, but it's part of being a trader. Cheers, guys.